started the mounting process. Welcome everybody and uh, it's so good to see you all again. I can hear, uh, all, see all the comments coming in. Unfortunately, uh, I'm not able to see you in person uh, like the Zoom calls, but I guess this is a much safer option. Uh, it's so nice to see Steve G. Thank you for coming. Uh, my father-in-law is here, Radha Krishna G. From all the way from Bangalore. It's 5.30 in the morning. And <laughs> thank you for waking up and uh, being here. And Sanjeev, thanks for joining and everyone else here. It's such, such a pleasure. We've been having this uh, series on the structures and disciplines of Hindustani classical or raga vocal music now for the, for about five years, um, five weeks. This is the fifth week. And uh, we've covered quite a bit of ground. We've, we went from a general overview of the music to understanding and listening to the music of Gwalior and then the music of the uh, Jaipur Gharana and then we went on to listen to the Agra Gharana music as well and in our final last and final session today uh, I thought uh, what I want to do today is something since it's the last session I, I don't know if we have time to go through uh, you know, Kirana Gharana in, in full detail. So what I think I will do is a little bit of Kirana and then we will also take uh, some time to listen to the music of other important uh, Gharanas such as uh, uh, you know, uh, Patiala and Rampur Sahaswan and uh, uh, Indore and a few other Gharanas that are, on the, that are offshoots of these four or five major Gharanas. So To begin with, a little bit history of uh, what Kirana Gharana is all about. Kirana, the word Kirana comes from uh, the word Kairana. Kairana is a small town in Uttar Pradesh, a village, town, now I think it's a city. It's grown quite a bit. Uh, but this was where many of the musicians uh, back in the day from different parts, once the Mughal kingdom uh, started to disintegrate in 1857 after the uh, British took over, uh, they spread to different places and some of them went and stayed in this place called Kairana. So musicians from there, Abdul Wahid Khan, Abdul Karim Khan, and all these phenomenally talented and you know, rich tradition of music that they carried with them, they were able to create a whole new brilliant style and beautiful style which has become very popular over the last hundred years. Uh, Abdul Wahid Khan and Abdul Karim Khan are considered the you know the, the doyans or the, the founders of this gharana. And it the gharana goes back all the way to Drupad singers and Bean Kars. Bean Kar Bande Ali Khan Sahib was a very uh, respected and great scholar back in the day. I'm talking about mid to uh, late 19th century. So from uh, Bande Ali Khan Sahib, these people received uh, their training. And uh, Abdul Karim, uh, Karim Khan Sahib and Abdul Wahid Khan both were cousins and they became very popular uh, in the day. Now, Abdul Karim Khan Sahib, uh, we have his recordings. Abdul Wahid Khan Sahib for the longest time didn't even want to record. He was against recording. He was, uh, you know, but then finally towards the latter part of his life, I think in the late, I think he died in 1949. But just before that, they, they managed to get him into the studio and, and do a few recordings. And thankfully, we have some evidence of his music. 
Abdul Karim Khan Sahib, on the other hand, was a very, uh, uh, you know, ent- enterprising musician. He was not only extremely scholarly, but, you know, Ratan Jankar, S.N. Ratan Jankar, of the, you know, another scholar, music- musicologist, who we discussed during the Agra Kharana sessions, you might remember, had written about Abdul Karim Khan Sahib, saying that when Khan Sahib sings, it doesn't seem like he's singing a rag. It seems as though he's in a divine union with the rag. He and you know goes into this different space that is just between him and the rag, and it's absolutely divine. It's absolutely holy, and just being in that room when he's performing. I mean, I'm, I've read and I've been told many incident instances of what a great musician he was. One of the instances what was uh, K P Mukherjee. Uh, Kumar Prasad Mukherjee was a very senior musician and musicologist when I was in ITCSRA in in Kolkata, and he once told me that the first time he listened to Abdul Karim Khan, Abdul Karim Khan Sahib, he was very tiny. He was about ten years old, and uh, his father dragged him to this concert, and he said, "You must come and listen." And the child, he didn't want to go, and but he went along anyway. and he goes there and sits down and he starts singing and it's absolutely tuneful and he, the child fell asleep after some time and then when he woke up he saw the concert is in full swing and abdul karim khan sahab was singing his mouth was open but and then the boy nudges his father and says i can see his singing but why can't i hear what he's singing and so the father said what are you talking about of course he's singing you can all hear him sing but then when he said when i i clearly remember that memory when when i realized that he was singing and i was hearing him sing but he was so tuneful he had merged so beautifully with the tanpuras that it almost looked like his mouth was open and there was just nothing coming out of it but it was just so one with the sound of the tanpuras and he said there was another thing he remember there were four tanpuras playing that day when he was singing all around him four of his students sitting with four big massive tanpuras and playing and from all those strings if even one string went wrong abdul karim khan sahab would point exactly that one string and put his hand right there and correct it so that was his level of how tuned he was in spirit uh, to the music itself it was like a meditation tuning the tanpura and tuning himself to the tanpuras and then presenting the music was all a part of his meditation uh one of my most favorite pieces of music we will we have to start with that piece i mean there was no getting around it this is uh rag lalit so abdul karim khan sahab recorded quite a few times in his in his life i said he was very enterprising um uh, and at one point when he was in actually in need of uh funds and need of money and uh, going through uh, not a very you know, prosperous patch i suppose he found out that there was this record company that was that was recording people and they were paying by the song so he just landed up there and said here i can have my music to offer what how how does it work and this was in the year 1905 so we're talking about 120 years ago when the recording had just about started in india within a year or two is when this happened and i was told by mashkur ali khan sahab that in those recordings there is no tabla even khan sahab was playing on a the theka himself on a little pe- on a tin box uh so <laughs> interesting uh pieces of information and trivia i'm not playing recordings from that particular series of 1905 because they're still quite um you know i think uh, quality is a little difficult to listen to if you're not a student of music and if you don't if you don't you know want to listen to archival recordings if you just there for entertainment so in 1930 between 31 and 34 khan sahab recorded another series of recordings in which uh, this particular recording of lalit that he sang is my absolutely my favorite the very first dha that he sings there's so many musicians here in this room uh, you know 
Radha Krishna ji is here, Steve ji is here, and all of you, uh, Aaron, De, uh, Neil, all of you will, will appreciate this. The way, the moment that first dha comes, I mean, I get goosebumps almost every time I listen to it. So, Bhavanda Yardha Joban, Rag Lalit by Abdul Karim Khan. Oh, sorry. So yeah, that was one of my absolute favorite recordings of uh, Abdul Karim Khan Sahib singing Rag Lalit. Uh, Abhik, uh, some people did have this trouble before. Uh, just just refresh it. I mean, they were not able to hear it also. But after refreshing, I think they could hear. So, yeah, coming back to our uh, subject, Abdul Karim Khan Sahib singing. This was, I think, just before he died. I think he died in 1937. And I think this recording was uh, around 1934 or, or the like. So, uh, he was in his mid to late 60s, I presume. So, that was Abdul Karim Khan and... Although he was, uh, one interesting story about him before we move on is that 
This is another story I heard from Mashkur Ali Khan Sahib. So the way Khan Sahib, Abdul Karim Khan Sahib, passed away itself shows how how in tune with music he was. He was on his way to a concert to Pondicherry, and uh, in the train back in the day, and uh, uh, they were going small small station after station after station, and at one point. he suddenly told his students you know get off get off let's let's we need to get off the train and they, they were quite surprised they said we still have a little way to go he said no let's let's get off the train immediately and he made everyone get off on the train platform somewhere in between and uh, he made them get all the t- instruments out and start start tuning the instruments and he got them to tune and he started singing right there on the railway platform and uh, he sang for about 5 7 minutes and then he just collapsed right there he just that was that is how he left this world um blessed death i would say but also it shows that he was probably already you know beyond this world to have that kind of an experience and a premonition of what was to come his students if you look at who he taught there were a few people such as uh, Savai Gandharv and uh, Roshanara Begum and quite a few people but we will first listen to this other wonderful musician called Roshanara Begum and the reason when i play this recording i want you to slowly start paying attention to the music of the gharana itself there are a few things that the music stands for or that uh, the technique of the gaiki um, speaks of one is something called merukhand or meerkhand which essentially means that the progression happens almost using a permutation combination method so um in whether you take a few set of notes or whether you choose to take a few combination of phrases you combine them in a way that creates a com- constant back and forth between those notes permutations and combinations creating musical uh you know new phrases and new avenues to explore the rag with so that is called merukhand or meerkhand so for example just to give you a, a a short example let's say we have any four notes hmm? sa sa re ga ma pa five notes sa ga re ma pa re sa ma ga pa ga re sa ma pa ma sa ga re pa this this is basically merukhand at a very in a very very simple format but now you can't just go about mixing any note just the way you want it there has to be a certain progression there is a certain thought process where are you landing what notes are you picking up from what notes do the rag permit what movements do the rag permit sometimes you can go from ga to ma but you can't go from ma to ga and things like that so um adhering to the rag rules adhering to the gaiki principles adhering to the rules of aesthetic it has to sound nice it's not mathematics so com- considering all of these things that process of development is is called merukhand or meerkhand now this is something that this gharana is especially known for so i'm going to share a recording now um, of one of khan saab's primary students roshanara begum she actually went ahead and uh, moved to pakistan after uh, indian independence or uh, india and then pakistan independence after the from the british rule so this is a small example of what her music used to sound like exceptionally good quality of uh, you know tankari alap voice quality everything is just phenomenal musician roshanara begum rag shuddh kalyan <laughs> Ah 
so that was an example of Roshanara's Roshanara Begum's music. Uh, as I mentioned, extremely tuneful, absolutely uh, masterly in in the rag renditions and and the concept of you know Mirkhan aesthetically, it's it's so rich and beautiful. Um, actually, before I move on, I'm going to play. You know how peaceful this recording was just now. I'm <laughs> I'm going to take you to the last one minute of this recording, and. Uh, See how where this goes by the time she finishes this rag rendition. that <laughs> for those of you who were here for the you know uh, in the first lecture and couldn't attend the rest of them we went through an, an overview of of the different uh, aspects of what raga sing sang music is all about in the alap and the taan and the, and all of those things and this what we heard at the beginning the first part of the recording was the alap vistar portion in the vilambit composition and the last uh, section that we heard <laughs> was uh, a rendition of taan or very fast movements of notes uh, in the same raga i don't know whether that was spectacular wasn't it uh that again was roshanara begum moving on another one of my favorite musicians uh, from this gharana uh, hira bai barodekar this was abdul karim khan saab's daughter and uh, she learned from a few other people though she didn't learn from khan saab very much um abdul karim khan uh, married uh, this princess actually she was uh, the daughter of the of a king who had assigned him to teach uh, his daughter and then uh, it it and turned up into a beautiful love story and then they got married and then they had many children and all of them were musicians suresh babu mane saraswati rane um hira baba rodekar and all of these musicians yes they all have that's that's another testament to how those days were they had not only were they did they have hindu names saraswati and hira hira bai and suresh babu but they also retained suresh babu mane retained his um uh, maternal last name so they were very open very progressive people back in the day i suppose uh and uh, so suresh babu mane also taught hira bai barodekar and she learned from abdul wahid khan the, the cousin of abdul karim khan sada that i had mentioned uh most of hira bai's training happened from abdul wahid khan sahab and she there's a beautiful interview that i listened to of of hira bai when i was at sra i mean she was not there i mean i was listening to the recording and she talks about how sometimes just when you started you know like a rag simple rag like, rag like yaman abdul wahid khan sahab would start teaching and by the time you got up to the gandhar even to the third or fourth note in the progression you realize that it had been a good 3 hours of of training so that was how they learnt and uh, we we'll we see that in in her music uh one of my favorite musicians we listen to a small uh probably just a short 2 3 minute clip from from a larger performance of hers this is uh, rag marwa which is another very solid uh, kirana gharana rag and by hira bai barodekar
listen to the meru khand progression This was a classic example of what I was talking about as Meru Khand, which is, um, you know, permutation and combination within a certain set of notes. Sa re ga ma da. That was a combination she was dealing with in this last alap that we heard. Ah, re da da re ga re. gare da da gare ga ma ma da ma da re da ta ma da ga ma re ga re ni da da so that progression is called meru khand and this is and to keep the interest on not make it sound mathematical and connect with the lay connect with the tal now that's where it it goes into a whole different uh you know area of complexity because until you're just dealing with the rag rag phrases it's easy but then you have the tal that's going on in the background and if you noticed as opposed to the tal that we heard in the previous sessions where we were dealing with agra gwalior or jaipur the tal in the vilambit portion was much faster whereas in this gharana the speed of the tal the tempo that is chosen is very slow uh they both have their pros and cons when you have a faster tempo in a vilambit relatively fast it's still slow but when you talk about uh you know something that's going at 1 2 at this speed and you having a 12 to 16 bit cycle because of the syllables of the tabla you can still see the entire structure of the tal in this speed it becomes slightly less apparent the theka the, the shape and the form of the theka becomes less apparent but it's all the more challenging to fill that space you you have time the time is is stretched in a way that cannot get dull that cannot get boring you have to fill it with content you have to fill it with interesting things and uh, emotional expression and and all of those things so it, it's not at all um by any standards um, any less complex because it is slow or any more complex but they're just different streams but you see that in in kirana gharana the the lay of the tabla or the the tempo that is chosen in the vilambit compositions is regular is usually much slower than the the speed that is us- used in 
the music of other gharanas kirana also tends to use mostly in their vilambit uh, section they mostly tend to use ek tal a 12 beat cycle or a 14 beat cycle of jhumra um other uh, tal such as tilwada are not often used here or vilambit teen tal even you don't hear that very often so it is usually vilambit ek tal or jhap tal i mean i'm sorry vilambit ek tal or vilambit jhumra Uh, some compositions, of course, when they're singing a jab tal composition, they'll be jab tal. They sing all tal. I'm not saying they don't, but their preference. Uh, most number of Vilambit compositions are usually usually in these two tals. Going on to another giant of a musician from this gharana, Pandit Bhim Sen Joshi. uh abdul karim khan's student was uh, as i mentioned sawai gandharv and sawai gandharv taught several people um including bhim sen joshi firoz dastur kangu bai hangal they were all very great musicians and all of them from the karnataka uh, area uh so that is attributed sometimes to the fact that uh, abdul karim khan sahab was also um uh, court musician in the court of mysore which is in the south in the state right now it's called karnataka but back in those days pre independence it was called uh, mysore uh, the princely state of mysore and uh, because of khan sahab's frequent visits to that part of the country he created a large following and uh, many very serious disciples who took to his style and learned from him and one of them was sawai gandharv whose student is bhim sen joshi so i would have liked to play a little bit of uh, sawai gandharv as as well but since we're kind of running out of time i'm going to go and go ahead and play a short clip of uh, uh, pandit bhim sen joshi singing rag bahar right now and then we'll take it from there If you have more time you can always listen to more musicians so Hamara ko dar bhule phule wale jawana moda bole koyal ki ho ka suni ho ka uthe kali ang sayu kar dar gudal na kali ang sang Actually uh, since we are talking about Bhim Sen ji I'm let me try and uh, do something different here i'm going to add i'm going to try and show you a video of uh, pandit bhim sen joshi singing this is uh, i think he's singing rag rag mia ki malhar Live 
ओके सो दैट वाज पंडित भीमसेन जोशी सिंगिंग राग मियाँ की मल्हार एंड दैट वाज व्हेन ही वाज एब्सोल्युटली एट हिज यू नो एट द पीक ऑफ हिज करियर एज अ टॉप रैंकिंग म्यूजिशियन एंड जस्ट गिव मी अ मिनट I'm sorry I'm lost with the tech a little bit uh, the screens have all kind of gotten mixed up just give me one second I'm sorry Hello Are you able to hear me now? Anyway, I'll I hope uh, you're able to hear me uh, for the time being. Uh, I'm going to move ahead. We can hear you fine, Samar. Okay, great, great. So that was uh, Pandit Bhim Singh Joshi singing at, at the prime of his career. Uh, I have a request to play a little bit of Savai Gandhar uh so sure actually why not uh, i'm going to try and share a small track mm. it's not letting me share anything anymore Ah, there it goes. Oh man, tech! I tell you. <laughs> so I hope this works. Uh, so I'm playing rag again. It's the same Miyaki Malhar, the same composition, but listen to his Guruji singing it now. But it's a very good one. that was uh, the great pandit savai gandhar who taught bhim sen ji who taught uh, gangu bai hangal uh, gurav ji and many other you know uh, great stalwarts of uh, the gharana from 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 karnataka and uh, we could go on and on about the musicians of this gharana and and so many more but i think we are almost out of time now so i'm going to move on to a few other gharanas that need to be mentioned when we're talking about a gharana series as i'd mentioned before so uh, for those of you who would like to uh, listen to uh, more about kirana gharana last week i think ustad mashkur ali khan sahab did a wonderful session on uh, kirana gharana the history of the kirana gharana and all that so of course he spoken in hindi but uh, if any one of you would like to listen to that uh, it's on it's available on the kirana gharana music academy facebook page if you go to www.facebook.com/kirana gharana music academy 
uh, you should be able to see that uh, video. It was from last week, and Khasab uh, speaks in detail about the history of uh, Kirana Gharana very beautifully, and all the musicians and how they migrated, and and all of the history. He's spoken for a good hour and a half, and I was speaking to his daughter today, and she said he would go on. He could go on for another hour and a half if he let him, but they had to, you know, end it at some point. But uh, he's another great, great scholar. So he and his father, Shakur Khan Sahib, they come from the other line of Abdul Wahid Khan Sahib's descendants. Abdul Wahid Khan Sahib taught many uh, students like Prannath, uh, Pandit Prannath, who came to the U.S. very early on in uh, the 20th century and taught many people here. Uh, there's also Shakur Khan Sahib, who was his student. And uh, it is, I was told that even the great film uh, singer, Bollywood, it's now it's called Bollywood, but back in the day, just Indian cinema. Uh, Muhammad Rafi, one of the greatest singers of the time, was also a student of Abdul Wahid Khan Sahib. He trained classically from him for many years, mostly voice training, but uh, nevertheless. Yeah. So Abdul Wahid Khan Sahib's lineage comes down to Shakur Khan and from Shakur Khan Sahib to Mashkur Ali Khan Sahib, uh, who I was who had the privilege of being very close to when I was in uh, Kolkata, and his nephew, uh, Arshad Ali and his uh, daughter Shahana are also singers of this Gharana right now. Now, when we talk about, I spoke about Abdul Wahid Khan Sahib and uh, a name that often is associated with one of, uh, when you talk about his disciples, is of Amir Khan, Ustad Amir Khan Sahib, who is also one of the greatest you know, musicians of the last uh, century. Um, it is said that he modeled his entire gaiki after Wahid Khan Sahib's singing. The 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 tempo with which he used to sing, the kind of mirkhand alaps that he used to do, and all of that was very very much uh, Wahid Khan Abdul Wahid Khan. Although um, they call it Indoor Gharana, but uh, most scholars tend to agree that it. Um, it's debatable whether it it can be called a gharana by its by itself. I don't know if Amir Khan Sahib himself called it Indoor Gharana, uh, but uh, it it came to be known as Indoor Gharana because Amir Khan Sahib was from there. But to my mind, uh, when I listen to his singing, it seems like it's more or less kirana. But definitely, I mean, he had he was a genius of a musician, so he brought something to it that was unique, and probably would qualify to be. A branch of the Kirana Gharana. So, uh, but whether it qualifies as a separate Gharana or not is debatable, but let's not get there. Uh, he was still a great musician that we must listen to and uh, cherish. So, let's listen to a small, uh, you know, this recording of his was uh, Pandit Ravi Shankar called it, he said it was probably the best pieces of Indian classical music ever recorded. Uh, Rag Marwa by Ustad Amir Khan. I'm not 
LP that Amir Khan sahab uh, had sung in it had darbari on one side and marwa on the other masterpiece of a recording masterpiece i mean impeccable in every way the rag the mood uh, you know the taan technique uh, in, in every way it's just phenomenal so that was uh, we were listening to amir khan sahab rag marwa uh, so so i would say indoor slash kirana gharana another gharana that is of uh, very you know significant um, i have a, a question here about salamat ali nazakat ali khan where would you how would you characterize their music Na, uh, salamat nazakat ali khan sahab i think both of their uh, the styles are very close to the next like uh, uh gharana you were going to talk to call, talk about called the patiala gharana patiala style um although salamat nazakat were identified as sham chaurasi gharana but i think they are again offshoots and offshoots and offshoots uh, essentially patiala gharana comes from patiala is in punjab region or north of india and uh, that music although was quintessentially an offshoot of uh, gwalior a lot of the compositions were the same that the speed of the tempo with which they performed was the same there was a lot of similarity with gwalior and then the technique with which they produced those notes their use of tans their use of very quick fast tans their use of uh, <coughs> paltas in the middle of their singing all of that gave it a very distinct flavor so that became uh, known as the patiala gharana we have kale khan sahab from this gharana who was uh, one of the founders then uh, there was another duo by the name alia fatu um, ali baksh and uh, fatih fatih ahmed they were also in fact they were known for their tankari and their speed of tans uh, there's a very nice uh, story uh, they performed once in the court of a king in jaipur and uh, krishna rao shankar pandit was very senior musicians um uh, from the time he came out and he was listening to the concert and after the performance he came and said you know you, you're really good but i have something to show you and then he brought a mirror and he held the mirror in front of them and said do you see your face clear you know it's, it's all good he said yeah they said yeah it's nice and then he started moving the mirror around like that and he said now can you see your face so <laughs> he says that's what happens when you take your tan speed out of proportion your the rag the face of the rag rag ka chehra 
it, it should be as clear as your face when you look at it or when you look at it in the mirror and when you take it to a place where it's too fast or it's too unnecessarily uh you know to a place where it's kind of it's get it gets warped then he said it's like kabhi sar kat gaya kabhi kaan kat gaya kabhi na kat gaya you know your nose is cut or your ear is cut or your head is cut or something other other if you shake the mirror that's what happens when you sing tans in in no just for the sake of tans it it shouldn't lose the character of the rag just like the marwa that we just heard it was so beautiful it was absolutely uh you know even the tan whatever section he was in of the composition that serenity or the mood of the rag was never lost so that quality we see in bade gulam ali khan sahab for those of you who are not indian people i'll spell that i'll say the name slowly it just sound like brother brother khan it's bade gulam ali khan that was his name bade gulam ali khan outstanding uh performer uh all he did i mean people were who uh, when i used to know my my guru ji kaikini ji dinkar kaikini was telling me that he used to visit him once in a while and every time he visited him khasa was singing no matter what time of the morning afternoon evening you enter his house and that there was be that little place that he had made for himself and he would sit there with his instrument his surmandal and continuously he would sleep he would sing he would sleep there he would eat there but that was his place he would never move from there and there was music 24/7 in his ears and and you know he was performing he was singing for himself practicing the whole time and um, we'll see what happens when someone does something like that when someone as so here this is a rendition of rag malkaus by bade gulam ali khan of uh, the patiala gharana
बापरे दैट वॉज उस्ताद बड़े गुलाम अली खान ऑफ द पटियाला घराना अगेन अनादर ग्रेट म्यूजिशन एंड एंड आई थिंक kind of out of time so we didn't get much time to discuss many other gharanas and other offshoot there is rampur saheswan uh, rampur was uh, mostly a, the patron the king of uh, rampur was a great patron of the arts and he used to get lot of musicians to come and stay there and uh, eventually uh, some musicians came to be known as rampur saheswan musicians mushtaq hussain um and uh, Nisar Hussain Khan Sahib they were all musicians of that gharana and we have Rashid Khan currently who is known as a musician of Rampur Saheswan although his style also i think leans more towards Amir Khan Sahib style and more towards and therefore towards gharana um, but he is still known as a Rampur Saheswan gharana musician Rashid Khan and then we have Banaras gharana we have Rajan Sajan Mishra currently who perform from that gharana um who else what am i missing mevati gharana uh, which was again an offshoot of gwalior uh, gagge nasir khan i think was the person who founded that gharana was a disciple of musicians from gwalior and then motilal uh, ji maniram ji and then we have our one of our greatest living legends pandit jasraj uh, currently who are uh, who he is he carries the flag of that gharana right now and his disciples and jeev abhyankar and many of them uh, who are musicians of the patiala gharana so that kind of uh, rounds up our session about uh, you know the gharanas of classical music there's so much more to talk about i was there was a constant question that keep kept coming over the last few weeks to give give a comparative study take one raga and and showcase how it is performed in different gharanas or how an agra gwalior jaipur girana musician would perform like say a rag like bageshri or you know a common raga or even compositions how they they constructed differently i have the playlist but i wish uh, we could go on uh, we're out of time but i would urge you to go to uh, my patreon page which i had spoken about last week as well i launched it last uh, friday and so it's live now so please go and sign up to that uh, uh because i i keep making podcast style videos and i keep talking about these subjects and there's guided listening sessions where i play recordings and do you know analysis of uh, exactly the nature that is being asked of me right now and uh, since there has been so much interest for that kind of a comparative study between gharanas i think i will take that up pretty quickly over the next few videos itself within the first 10 videos that i'll be putting up on patreon so uh, please go ahead and and uh, you know uh, as soon as possible if you uh, it's the link is patreon.com slash samarth nagar i'm trying to share the screen with you Oh that's not the screen I wanted to share. <laughs> so yeah it's I could do that too I could do that too. So this is the link uh, patreon.com/samarthnagarkar. Uh, If you go to this uh, a portal I think uh, I will have a chance to oh now I'm sharing the wrong screen. So uh, are you able to see the screen right now? Yeah yeah so that is the uh, patreon.com at summer slash summer nagarkar and i'll be and uh, what else this is uh, i i spoken about the book recommendations last time and for those of you who were not able to take a look at it there's uh, the book that i had wrote, written called rag sangeet there's also khyal gharanas of hindustani music uh i am not able to do that right now but let me see if uh, give me give me a minute i should be able to work this out if i go to basic and does that does that help yeah so now so this is uh, raga sangeet that's the book i had written and then there's khyal gharanas of hindustani music by vamanrao deshpande this lost world of hindustani music by kp mukherjee 
and aesthetics of agra jaipur gaiki sir babun rao hardankar and this book uh, this sorry this movie raga revelry that i had spoken about it's a very you know nice effort by shri devi takhar in fact i think raja radha krishna ji who was on this call and i were both present at uh, the uh, the screening of this both at the launch and the screening we were there at the indian consulate when they launched it a few years ago and last year at the screening they had here in new jersey it's a it's a really nice uh, movie uh, that takes you through the you know uh, not only the guru shishya parampara and the way the music is taught but also gives you a lot of actual content about how to practice what to practice how to learn the music what to listen to and all of that so it's a great resource for anybody who's interested in uh, learning more about classical music and uh, that's i think about it um any other questions uh, you're most welcome to uh, ask me right now and i'm uh, or should we um i suppose uh, there's a delay so that's going to take some time to get to people thank you thank you this has been uh, a a real pleasure it gave me a chance to listen to all this phenomenal <laughs> music for the sake of presenting here as well and uh, you know it's it's nice to go back to these things and and you now take a deep deep dive <laughs> no no you thank you thank you it's it's a pleasure and thanks so much to brooklyn raga massa for for taking this initiative and i think next week uh, our friend uh, abhik uh, mukherjee is going to continue the with these lessons he's going to go for the next five sessions talking about uh, the, i think first session will be an overview of uh, uh, sitar and and then he's going to go into different styles of uh, sitar specifically just as i went into different styles of vocal music i think he's going to go into different styles of uh, sitar and he's an extremely uh, not just a phenomenal musician but also a great scholar of music as well so i really look forward to being there with all of you to listen to his uh, the master classes as well yeah there's a no no i was just saying some renu ji asked if i have a list of the pieces that you heard today uh i i'll be happy to share them uh if you can uh, maybe give your uh, email addresses here in the comment section i'll be happy to email you uh, uh some of the recordings that uh, i was able to play today uh you know that that i have no problem that's absolutely it's it's great music that everyone should be listening to so i'll be happy to share it if you share all of your email addresses here then i'll i'll be happy to share it there and alternatively like i was mentioning one of the perks that i offer on uh or one of the offerings i i make on uh, 
my Patreon is to share playlists uh, frequently with uh, patrons where I, I share what I am listening to and give you an insight into the music that I like, the music that I listen to and that inspires me and that moves me. So that's another thing that I share on a regular basis uh, through, I call it the playlist recommendations. So that's something you should um, uh, definitely uh, sign up for. And uh, oh, some of them couldn't hear uh, Neil very well. Uh, apparently so i'm going to repeat some of the things that he said uh, next tuesday we have steve g steve gone uh, presenting a flute uh, uh, master class he's another you know, extremely uh, good musician uh, versatile musician and at the same time you know one of the most sweetest and generous and kindest people i know so Steve G is going to be presenting a workshop next uh, masterclass next Tuesday, and there's Mark Carey, who's also be presenting masterclasses. You should please go up and look up Brooklyn Raga Massive's website as well as their uh, uh, you know, Facebook page for all the details. And uh, Abhik Mukherjee will be, I think that's what Neil was talking about. The following five Friday Thursdays, 8 p.m. classes will be Abhik's sessions. No, I think that's about it as of now, yeah. Uh, thank you again and are we just going to end the call here or do you want to listen to something as we go? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to play this brilliant, uh, one of, again, one of my favorite pieces of music from uh, Bhim Sen Joshi. And those of you who need to leave, uh, you know, I think you can sign out anytime, but uh, this will keep running for the next few minutes, I suppose. Uh, this is fittingly a Bhairavi Thumri uh, called Babul Mora Nay Har Chuto Hi Jai by Pandit Bhim Singh Joshi. This song was written by the king of our the king uh, Wajid Ali Shah, in who uh, the last Mughal king who was taken into prison by the British in 1857. He was a great patron of music and of the arts and dances and and poetry and all of that. And um, so one of his most famous Thumris being sung by. Pandit Bhim Singh Joshi in Bhairavi, Babul Mora. Enjoy and uh, once again, thank you so much for joining me for the last five weeks. It's been a wonderful journey. Signing off. Thank you.
Thank you, everybody. I think we'll call it a night at this point. And <laughs> thank you so much to Brooklyn Raga Massive and for all of you for uh, joining and making this such a wonderful five-week session. And uh, hope to keep on uh, engaging like this and uh, continuing our wonderful journey together, enjoying and listening to great music together. Thank you. Cheers to that. Yes. <laughs>